When I ask people to think of publishers who corner the indie budget console market, a lot of people will think of Rattalika Games, quite rightly, because they've been all over the place since the PS4 era of consoling. However, lately there's been another developer that started to enter the fray, and they're called Cubite Interactive. They've been porting over various different either really old, old, old games from the 90s, or some recent indie classics that have kind of gone under the radar, but everyone has like gives them glowing reviews, and it's giving them a new wide audience, and Chameleon is one of those games. It's a 2D platformer that crosses over a little bit like a runner, and it works a little bit like uh, either Tarzan Freeride or very recently Future Grind that came out. Uh, perhaps Sonic on Rails is another good of analogy of this. You play as this chameleon that is bouncing from one rail to another, and there's two different colours, and I call them neon noodles. <laughs> that was the way how it kind of went in my head, because they squiggle around all over the shop for each level. You've got the cyan and the purple, and what you'll be doing is switching between the two to keep yourself alive as one kind of either ends up in loads of spikes or drops out of the screen level, and you'll need to jump and switch and rotate around and work out exactly at what time to bail so that you can then jump to the right rail and continue on with gravity on your side. The reason I mention the runner aesthetic is that you are constantly moving forward, but with the bumper controls you have two different speeds outside of your normal. You can go slower or you can go faster, and when that's combined with the jump button, which you can press and hold for longer jumps, or you can just do a little mini tap for a bunny hop, or just a press for a normal jump, You've got then three variants of the jump with the three different speeds as well. So it gives you much more nuance in the way how you traverse these levels compared to what I expected going in. And it's that level of flexibility that makes Chameleon really, really playable, but also exceptionally hard because the level design absolutely takes advantage of the fact that you need to know and kind of preempt what's the speed, what type of jump it is that you need, and what's coming next. Because as you go through these 80 levels, the difficulty curve starts to ramp up quite quickly, and it expects you to plan ahead and almost memorise a quick level for about 30-40 seconds of grind time, so that you can then perform all of those moves and survive. Each level comes with a load of energy to collect, which will, if you collect enough, charge up your battery, and that's kind of one extra thing that you can do. There's also always a hidden floppy disk, uh, or neon disk I think it's called, in the game, uh, that's a pickup that is always tucked away in a weird alternative way to play the level. And the other thing I'd say about Chameleon is that there are different ways to make it through a level, particularly as they get more and more spaghetti junction-y with the purple and cyan uh, noodles kind of intersecting each other and making it actually very tricky sometimes to know exactly what the right way to go is. That opens up lots of room for interpretation, lots of ways of trying to get through a level quicker. And that combined with the fact that the gravity changes polarity depending on where you are, either upside down, right way up, or if you're spinning round in circles and about to go round a corner, it's at that point where you can sometimes really take advantage of it and slingshot your way like halfway across a level. This is all at play for you, and whilst it is a little bit chaotic and rough around the edges in terms of the actual physics, I still had good fun trying to work out exactly how is the best way to collect everything or get through the level as quickly as possible. If you're coming to this game expecting an easy platinum or an easy 100% of achievements, this game will laugh in your face. <laughs> it's hard as nails. Uh, firstly, because you're going to need to charge all your batteries and collect all of these 80 uh, neon discs across the 80 levels of the game, but all of the other trophies are tied to a like secondary style of playing, and it's all around time trials. Now, I mentioned earlier on that the gravity uh, has like moments of weird polarity shift where you can break the game essentially, um, and the time trials take that into account, and it feels like a totally separate mode to try and smash your way through these levels as quickly as possible without falling off the world, falling up the world, hitting any of the spikes, getting stuck in weird and wonderful loops that you then can't get out of. It's all quite 
quirky and especially if you start to get things where there are enemies on the um, grind rails as you go around as well it makes it exceptionally tricky so be prepared for extreme frustration constant restarts really trying to nail either getting that time trial right or aiming for that 100% for your batteries or hidden power up for me I found that too difficult because I'm a little weasel when it comes to gaming sometimes, and Chameleon did best me for those like high level things, but making my way through the levels and getting to the end was what I could do. And so I found that still incredibly addictive because there's a speed and a flexibility and a just simple to understand, hard to masterness that takes me right the way back to early Sonic games. I've mentioned Future Grind, which is an excellent uh, similar kind of rail grinding game that came out, I think it was last year, maybe 2020, with a more polished graphic set. So if you're more snobby around your graphics and want something with tricks in, for example, Future Grind would be an alternative to this. Tarzan Free Ride would be another one. Slimer uh, would be another one. There's loads that do this style of kind of grind mechanics going on. This is a really good addition to that little mini uh, 2D adventure subgenre, I guess. Um, and because I think a lot of people will just sneer at it because it's out at budget price, but also doesn't come with an easy platinum, I don't want people to sleep on it. Is it going to change your life? No. But this is a really competently made uh, and quite oddly addictive, even though I did scream at the TV quite a few times, uh, 2D platformer that deserves a little bit of love. So, written review over on highplanegames.com later this weekend. Happy gaming! Higher Plane Games is part of the Higher Plane Network, a completely independent media outlet supported by people like you. The goal is to create the best possible content that cultivates a richer indie scene for games as well as music and entertainment. To find out more and to get involved, visit patreon.com forward slash higherplanenetwork. Your support makes all the difference, and in return you'll gain access to bonus content and downloads. Thank you for watching.